All right. Hey everybody, how's it going? Dave here, A1U TV. I appreciate you guys for watching. So check it out. I've talked a lot about limit straps and sway bars and geometry and articulation multiple different times over the last couple of years on my channel. Um, we've come across people that like to argue, people that like to bicker, people that like to you know give their way of doing things. I'm just going to give you a little bit of insight as to how some of these things that are on the rear ends of these Razors, Can-Ams, Kawasaki's, uh, Hondas, anything. Anything with a sway bar, anything with, you know, anything you can put limit straps on. That's kind of what we're, that's what we're focused at here. So, the cool part about this machine here, this RS1 that I'm building, is it has an aux off-road electronic sway bar installed in it. Uh, this is compliments of them. And um, one of the cool things about this sway bar is it allows me to explain to you guys a lot easier as to what goes on in the rear end of these machines. You'll find that a lot of people think that your sway bars actually limit how far down your suspension can go. That's not true. Um, the things that limit how far down your trailing arms go is your shocks, okay? It doesn't matter if your trailing arms are hooked up to sway bars or not, they're only gonna go down as far as the shocks will allow them to. The cool part about this little test is we don't even have the shocks installed. So these trailing arms and everything are literally being stopped by the axles. So it's going down as far as it can. <clears throat> what I'm gonna show you is Right now, we have the sway bar disconnected. And the, the, the reason why this is important is because I'm gonna show you that when you, when you lift up on this side, it doesn't affect the opposite side, okay? And now, where a lot of people, they don't understand that a sway bar isn't there to limit your trailing arm suspension, it's there to prevent body roll. Okay, if you want to limit your suspension's droop and how far down it goes, that's where limit straps come into play. Okay, let me show you something. Check this out. Sway bar's hooked up. We can lift this thing all the way up as high as it'd go. And you are able to articulate this machine just like that. Now, when you're going through fast, high speed, you know, courses or something like that, that's not a good thing because what's gonna happen is the top end of this machine is gonna to wanna to lean over. Well, when the machine leans over, you're not gonna have any stability because you don't have a sway bar connected. So, let's do that. Just with a flip of a switch, we've now engaged our electronic sway bar, and now if you watch, you hear it click, that's all it is. That little click, and now we're connected right to left. Now, here's where this comes into play. When you're hauling butt and you're going around corners and you're, the top end of your machine wants to lean to the right, what it's going to do is it's going to push up on this side of the suspension. Well, in turn, it's going to pull up on that side too. So if you lean this way, this side comes up, which also makes that side go up, which makes the body roll counteract, go back the other way. Pretty simple stuff. For all like the lifted guys, all the new guys that are getting into like mud riding and stuff like that, the main, the main thing to remember here is if you're worried about axle angles like this, limit straps, okay? If you're worried about body roll, you wanna go fast, sway bars. If you wanna live the best of both worlds, get yourself an Ox Off-Road electronic sway bar. Appreciate you guys for watching. See you next time.